facilitating digital transformation through securing unmanaged devices throughout your enterprise. Let's, let me share my screen. So my name is Joe Kazukali, and I am a senior global black belt, senior global black belt at Microsoft, um, focusing on enterprise IoT, IoT, and operational technology security. So thank you for your time. So as we start to look at, you know, start to think about how do we manage our devices and and what are we um, securing, right? So there's a whole diverse range of devices, and this can be, you know, where this is opening up the gates across an enterprise and not just with your typical operational technology and IoT um, type vertical industries, you know, such as manufacturing and mining. Now, you know, we're looking at the corporate and the enterprise side of, of, of verticals where we have devices ranging from, you know, printers and cameras to, you know, connected TVs and display units. You know, then we're going into building management systems and, you know, who controls the lifts, how does it control the lifts when you scan your badge to know that you're on level 26 and you can't get access to level other levels in that building, for example. Your coffee machines are connected now. So it's all about getting a grasp of, of what is out there for your environment because, um, and I'll be repeating this, but visibility is key. Um, visibility of your assets is, is visibility of your risk um, because you can only protect what you know and you need to know what you don't know and then make risk judgments accordingly. So as we, as we see, you know, devices, IoT devices, connected devices, and that's just, that's your watches, that's your TVs, that's your coffee machines, that's your, your printers, which we already know are connected. But, you know, your, the fridges in the, in the kitchen and tea rooms are, are connected now, you know. You have your building management systems, you have trucks and delivery services that are now connected by GPS. Um, we're using drones now to do deliveries as well around the world um even here in australia recently supermarkets are going to start trialing that and what we've seen you know drone attacks and being hijacked and then being able to get into the to the corporate network right so so this is exponentially going to grow to 27 billion um they're predicting by 2025 and you know could even be sooner right so this is all kind of getting out of control in terms of what we can manage and we need the tools and and the right education and mindset to to understand that so as you could see when it all started with it everything's sweet everything's connected everything's managed every everyone knows what everyone is using so it and infosec teams have had control they're like okay this is your corporate laptop um it can only do this we could put a policy on it you probably connect to our VPN because we're talking old school times, but we know this is your, you cannot bring in any personal devices, right? If you try, you know, they won't be, they won't work because we, you know, we know what we know. Come, you know, fast forward a bit of time, you know, we brought in BYOD, bring in your, bring in your phone. We'd love you to, you know, use your, <laughs> have access to your corporate email um, on your phone, wherever you are, you know, bring in your tablet if you want, if you want to use a, personal device, say you didn't want to use a corporate standard laptop, you wanted to use a Mac or, or you know, a Linux box if you wanted to, because you want to do some testing, if you're an engineering type thing, you know. Then, you know, with the IT and the OT, you know, those lines are blurring. Like, like I was saying before, you know, building management systems can fall under IoT, they can fall under OT because they, they have certain protocols sometimes, depending on the vendor, that, that speak more OT and don't speak IoT and IoT. And then we've also got the physical, um, physical assets, like your cameras, your surveillance cameras, which are now IP connected, so they're not all hardwired back. You know, they're, they're usually wireless. Um, you've got your printers, obviously, now, too. They do more core home functions. Instead of just being connected to the LAN, um, they're actually connected to the internet a lot of the time now because the manufacturer insists that 
Um, they have connectivity. They can see when when the ink levels are low. They can see when it needs some maintenance with the spools and and all those type of stuff. Coffee machines. I know in our office um, in Sydney we've got connected coffee machines. They're full digital and they have the little wireless symbol on them. So we know that you know they're doing call home somehow, um, either to the coffee manufacturer to say you know refill my coffee beans or something's broken or something it needs a clean. You know, so. With all that, the attack surface is growing and the adversaries, the bad actors, they're, they're laughing now because they, they don't just have to worry about breaking into a firewall, um, they have three layers of firewalls. They can bypass that. They can, they can break into, into the printer. They can, they can break into the building management system. They can break into the cameras now. If they're connected to the internet and they have, a, they, you know, these adversaries have crazy tools. Um, I was watching a video the other day um, where the tool can copy NFC um, NFC off a card and then open safes with it in the hotel. Like it's 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 pretty crazy these days. And so there's so many ways that they can get in now, um, not just through the through the traditional ways of trying to break through a firewall and and obviously still do their fishing because we've seen that lately, especially in Australia and I'm sure in every region around the world. Um, but, you know, if as people are getting smarter, then they can go back to technology where, you know, the passwords aren't changed, the default passwords aren't changed, um, stuff like that. So what are some of the challenges that um, enterprise IT um, faces you know, in terms of people, in terms of the teams with the business? But to, so to start with, it's not a focus. These are unfamiliar devices. No, nah, that, that coffee machine is connected to the internet. It's fine, you know. Um, so how do we bridge that gap of knowledge? Because we need that. So we need to have, we can't go out and hire specific businesses, can't go out and hire specific people for their, their stock, for their security teams that are just IoT or OT focused. Um, it'll cost too much. It will then bring in multiple tools to manage. So the OPEX will actually increase as well as CAPEX. In, and CAPEX might drop because, you know, these devices might be cheaper if you buy them in bundles, for example. But your OPEX will go up because now you've got multiple tools to look at. You've got to do more training. Um, and, and the quantity, right? The, the quantity of the, of the assets is exploding, as, as we just saw. So how do we... How do we get that digital adoption for the business, right, to, to let the business grow, but then be able to manage it and secure it, right? So so that's, you know, and then don't overwhelm the staff. And we've heard a lot about burnout in top security, right? And so, you know, that's only going to get um, bigger unless we can control and provide the tools that can that can keep everything under control. Uh, the, the lack of proactive... Um, assessment of risk. Like I said, as the attack surface grows, if you don't have that visibility, your your risk level is going up. So having visibility provides you um, scope to to manage your risk profiles and then uh, accordingly create policies um, of action. Right? And then obviously the business impact, impact. So again, back to the OPEX, costs will go up. You know, you'll get more. Um, Incidences um, without having this visibility, right? So you have it'll be, there's more risk of breaches now. So that's a big in business impact because how did they get in? Oh, we didn't know the coffee machines were connected. We didn't know the printers call home. Um, having that level of visibility is why is the printer, you know, talking to someone in in Europe instead of just going to their manufacturer in in Japan, right? For example. So having that visibility. Um, gives you that understanding to to lessen the business impact because you now know what you know and you now know what you didn't know, so now you can act accordingly. So again, the whole being able to have a SOC team that can work across IT, OT, and enterprise IoT, and this session is focused on enterprise IoT, but it is a bit of a it's a it's a mindset shift, right? It's having a, a SOC team that can manage everything, and to do that, you need the tools, right? You need the appropriate tools, you need the appropriate data that the tool is going to provide, <clears throat> which isn't talking too much in the level of an OT or an IoT person, 
where you need to then train the staff or go and hire specific people, like I mentioned earlier. You want to be able to have a tool that can can speak common common language across all. And yes, you, you may need some little bit of training on that, but not as much as if you had specific tools only for that that had to then integrate into your IT stack. So let me introduce Defender for IoT and specifically for Enterprise IoT. So we want to protect your in enterprise of things, right? So, you know, IoT is in the Internet of Things, right? So we want to protect your in enterprise of things. And let's let's take a look and go from left to right. So we look at these micro agents, and these are the little micro agents that we can put Defender for IoT on. There can be dedicated sensors, they can be detectors, they can be in the meters, and these are pure greenfield OT. So we won't really worry about in this discussion. As we move over to the agent in the space monitoring, it, we're starting to blur the line because this is where we do passively, and I'll go through that architecture shortly. But this is where we passively um, read data into our sensor um, and and detect, you know, your PLCs, your any of your OT in ICS tools, right? And again, we're not going to talk about that, but we're moving across the general purpose IoT, and that's your cameras, your your HVACs, your heating. Um, ventilation and air conditioning, um, your thermostat, your smoke alarms, right, and 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 even the uh, um, I've heard vaping alarms now instead of smoke alarms, right? They're big and more in the school and the education universities, right? Um, as we move over to corporate IT, this is where we're talking about today with the enterprise IT, and again, it's agentless. Um, we have, you know, we want to look at your IP phones. We want to see that your your IP phones are talking to their to their um, endpoint to their call manager type function, but and nothing else, right? So your coffee machines, like I said, um, and, and and a risk with the coffee machines also is you know the 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 rep that comes in to do the maintenance, he will bring his laptop in to do his maintenance if he needs to do anything like that. His laptop might have um, malware on it that he doesn't know about because his kids might use it after after hours to play some games, right? So or even a tablet, right? So. But because it's connecting to that coffee machine, you know, that's then connecting to the corporate network because it's got to get to the internet somehow. Um, and it'll obviously, hopefully, go through your corporate network to your, to your internet links um, through some firewalls. But still, he, he will still get into the, to the corporate network that way or the malware could spread across from there. Printers, like I mentioned before, and we go to the network devices. We know those are common router switches, wireless access points, um, et cetera. And then when we go... On the far right, we've got the agent base. And there, this is where Defender for Endpoint comes in to act as a source of um, to find your devices and your assets in the, in the enterprise network. So that's you know your agent based on your laptops and your tablets and your mobiles that we know about with Defender for Endpoint. So what what we have here at Microsoft is an integrated solution, completely integrated solution. We we get Feeds from obviously um, Defender for Endpoint MDE, and they they can feed into Def Defender for IoT sensor. We we will have a Defender for IoT Enterprise IoT sensor released shortly, um, which is currently in private in preview, um, but that will act the, as a sensor as well on your network, um, passively or actively, to to detect um, IoT device um, Enterprise IoT devices. So while you're MDE can do that too while you're walking around, while you're sitting on your desk in your laptop or on your phone. You know, when you go on your mobile and you look at what, what access points are available, where you are, it'll, it'll just tell you what's what's around. It, it does the same, same type of thing, right? With Defender for IT, Enterprise IT sensor, it'll do the passive scanning too, but it'll also do active scanning as well. Uh, because the Enterprise IT devices can handle, handle more traffic actively versus an OT environment, we, we will have that too. But all that can feed into Sentinel, right? Our seam source solution, where we can correlate all incidents, or assets, or alerts uh, across your whole enterprise environment. So this will all feed into one. And what that provides is a simple language, pane of glass view for your SOC to to work from. So they'll they'll be able to look across the whole field end-to-end, -end, know that the printer is doing this, shouldn't be doing that, we need to act on that, let's do some playbooks to do that. We can send, a, we can send you know, um, 
policy to a firewall to then you know block those ports, etc. All right. Um, and again, collates all your CVEs, does all your um, vulnerability assessments um, based on you know firmwares and that across your IoT and OT enterprise IoT environments. So just some of the principles, high level, we, we want to discover. So the main point of visibility and, and asset visibility and security is to do a discovery. Um, then we want to move across and we want to assess. We want to assess any risk analysis. And that's basically doing vulnerability assessments. We want to see the firmwares are up to date. There's no CVEs on those firmwares. There's no CVEs on the, on the hardware detected. Right. And then once we do that, we, we want to look into some behavior analytics. So this is where we, we think about, you know, should Joe be logging in at 2 a.m. on a Wednesday morning on either the enterprise network or um, logging into the building management system, for example? You know, should he be doing that? Is that part of his role? If not, let's raise an alarm. We can take some actions automatically with, via Sentinel um, or even via MDE to do some policies and, and you know block Joe from doing that right and also then send an email to 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 him as a warning and his manager whatever action your pol your enterprise policies um, dictate and yeah and then we want to respond so so that response is is part of the you know the, the playbook actions the automation of that so we want to be able to know that Joe shouldn't be doing that. Oh, yes, actually, Joe did that. He did log a change ticket. He was upgrading some software during the night, and he needs to do it after hours. Um, so, you know, we, we can then also decide to scrap that as well. We can, you know, clear, clear that alert and say that that's normal for Joe to do that once a month, right? So just... Uh, High level of the complete architecture. So as we talked about that micro agent earlier, we won't focus on that, but we're looking more in the middle there, the the, the um, enterprise IoT. So we'll have an enterprise IoT sensor, which will run off a tap, a span port on your, a tap or a span port on your network switch, um, and just ingest all the data coming in, um, based on IP addressing, some, based on broadcast and based on some unicast alert too. We will also then have Defender for Endpoint doing that too, based on broadcast traffic that it picks up that's on that, you know, um, access, that access point um, VLAN, for example, right? We've also got the IT, OT, ICS side, which again runs the same way um, off a spam port um, passively because, you know, OT, um, OT devices can't really take passive polling to see what's out there. So we do that passively only over there. Um, there is roadmap to do some active scanning too. So all that will feed into our cloud, um, go into you know, Sentinel services and collate into the Azure portal to, to provide that, um, that business analytics, right, with Power BI, give you that asset inventory, give it the vulnerability assessments, continuous threat monitoring. So we we have our threat intelligence team that are that are specifically trained from on OT and enterprise IoT and IoT to to you know know what the latest threats out there, do those assessments on firmwares, and and provide rich detail to to secure your environments, right. So if we dig a bit deeper into into our multi multi faceted approach, um, you know we'll look at the top. We'll have our enterprise IoT sensor running off a spare port. Like I said, we have our open space offices. So we have some laptops, we have printers. You know, and we have an agent on on one of the laptops too that's running the MDE agent. So he's acting as another source. You know, we've got conference rooms, or we have some TVs. We have a projector that's connected. Because um, generally they all now are now through AV, audio visual. So they, you know, there's a team that look after it. You've got your TVs and monitors in in the conference rooms. They're all connected, obviously, so we can book them into our Teams meetings um, and the wireless APs. So they're all feeding in, right, through your through these um, network switches, right? Then you know your facilities network because we've got to manage the building, so the BMS type stuff. You've got your thermostats, you've got your cameras, you've got your uh, 
smoke alarms and vaping alarms. Got all those type of devices there too. They're also acting as a, um, getting detected too through those span ports in that core switch, right? That all then goes into Azure and feeds into to collate all your data. On the bottom there, you've got your OT stuff. So that that connects into there too. Core switch to core switch, right? So you put we put your we put our Defender for IT sensor on that the OT version, and we're looking at you know again. Your, your PLCs, your your management systems, your Modbus protocols, all that type of stuff, all your typical OT stuff, that will talk into the OT sensor, which understands the OT protocols, while you know the enterprise IT sensor understands more IT based IoT um, to detect, you know, what what's a Samsung TV, what's a you know, different type of camera as well, you know, Logitech camera and stuff like that that's connected. So we're looking at all the data across your enterprise, feed it into um, Azure to collate into Sentinel um, and, and provide that end-to-end -end picture of visibility and control and security, obviously. So the way we do that is we have a number of engines. We have the behavioral engine, which is the behavioral analytics. We look at network attributes. We look at hardware attributes. We obviously look at software, firmware attributes um, coming from all the various sources that I mentioned, your network sensor, your MDE, and your third-party sources such as Zeek. That go into your database, feeds into Defender for IT, um, as well as MDE. Then we do our we can do our risk assessment based on that because we have a full clear picture we have that visibility now that we can then make our risk assessment do our policies decide you know prioritize across the business according to to the business needs right because we don't want to be a business blocker we want to be a business driver security never wants to be a blocker right go on to those days so along with all our tools and engines, we have Section 52, our world-class threat intelligence team sitting on top of that, which focuses on I IoT and OT. Um, and these are dedicated data scientists and researchers. That So what they do is they the Center for IT, their PI, they, they work on AI, AI, enterprise IoT machine learning devices. They have intelligence on IoT threat intelligence as well, so general generic IoT right, that we know that connected devices, watches, everything, right? Um, we, we have the vulnerability research. So again, we're researching constantly on what's out there within the IoT, OT space, um, with firmwares, with, with hardware, with, with everything, with manufacturing. And then we have our OT response team too, so we can provide guidance on, on actions and responses. So why it's better together? Because like I said, it provides that visibility. It's actually easy and flexible to adapt, very fast to adapt, um, especially MDE. Um, I mean, if customers already have it, there's a few little clicks they need to do to turn on IoT with an extra license for Defender for IoT. Defender for IoT as well, it's very simple to deploy. Um, the sensor can come physical or virtual, and it's, it's a passive, so it just needs to be placed in a network that can talk in the Purdue model on the OT side and on the IT enterprise IT side, it gets your core switch or your, your floor switch in your IT environment um, and act passively on that. Doesn't intrude in the network at all. Um, it, it's the last piece of our XDR story. And again, it augments the stock, right? So everything feeds into Sentinel, your SOC tools um, in a simple language end to end across your whole environment. And with that, I'd like to give you a little tour of the MDE environment acting as a, with Enterprise IoT. So let me switch to that. There it is there. Okay. So now we're on Defender um, MDE, 365 Defender. And you can see this is the main dashboard. What we'll do is we'll keep scrolling down where we will see total devices connected, 332. This is a demo environment. I'll click on that and you can view all the IT, IoT devices. So what we'll do is we can go here or we can go here. So what I'll do is I'll go to devices on this side and you can see the three, three tabs. So we've got the computers and mobiles. So these are the stuff we know, right? These are all workstations and 
endpoints, Linux boxes, servers, right? We, we this is the stuff we know. And then we got our network devices, which again, there's some Cisco devices in there, right? But now we've got IoT devices in here. So this is your enterprise IoT side of things. And here, what we can have, what we see here is we've got one high risk alert um, on your front dashboard here, 32 devices in total. So I will change this here. We've got 66 devices. So here, what we can see is we've got our IP addressing, we've got our device hub, which is a surveillance camera, we've got the vendor name, we've got the model name, we've got the, the the host name of the device in the Southern Network, and now we've got our risk level, and then we've got our exposure level. So remember, vulnerability is risk and exposure. So it might be high risk, but if there's no exposure, then, um, you know, it, it, it's actually, it's okay. It's not too bad, all right? So what we'll do is we can click on one. So we'll click on this guy, because this guy's high risk and medium um, exposure, so not too good. We click on this page and we've got some, you know, quick view of, of the device, right? Some what alerts and incidents and have. But let's go and open the actual device page, dig a bit deeper. So again, here we've got our device summary where we're looking at the exposure level thing. We've got what domain is part of, what OS it's running, IP address, um, what type of device, so surveillance, it's a camera, the vendor, so the full vendor name, the device model, and then, you know, we don't know who it's managed by. Last network activity, so we can see when he last came on, um, when he first connected, and then when he was last seen. Um, but over here's the good stuff, right? So here we've got two two incidents raised on him, on this guy, um, over the last 180 days. We've got our security assessment. So we've seen the exposure level is medium, and we'll, we'll get back to that. And then the device health, we're not seeing any. So what alerts do we see? We can see there's a malicious IP alert on two of these on, on this guy, right? So the timeline, when did it actually happen? Change that to 30 days. We should see some data here. So here's your timeline here, right? So this is when he connected, and then this is where he had the alert, all right? Malicious IP. So what we'll do is we've got any security recommendations, and I can go back to that, and any software. So this is like the firmware versions that we can we we can download through the environment. So we go to security um, recommendations here. We'll see that it says to update the BusyBox software. So that's basically the firmware, right? So the way to to fix the vulnerability attached to this is to update the firmware. And what we can do now here is, if it is something that we're not sure about, we can actually contain a device. And that basically means we can block communication um, to and from the device if we if we really need to. And then we can also we could also do other things like we can um, exclude the device. So we can actually take it off the tool because maybe it was connected for, for lab testing purposes by the R&D team or something like that. So we got the alert, we saw that it's a risk, and we can just contain it and remove it out of the logs. If we go back to our alert, so if we go into our incidents and alerts, You know, and this is where we can see if there's any cameras and anything that, that's causing any issues, right? So again, back to alerts here. These are all your um, alarms and, and items of stuff like that. So if we want to see any cameras, and if we go back to one of these down here, um, we we should have some TVs that we may need to look at. These audio visual TVs here, right? So. So this this is a smart light. So there's no real risk level, but it's got a high um, exposure level. So it's again, it's update update some software, right? So so around this, it's doing all your vulnerability management of your enterprise IoT devices. If we did need to say segment some devices out of the discovery, 
um, we can do some exclusions. So we can remove um, certain VLAN um, subnet out, out of out of the tool because we know, okay, you know, this is where maybe um, there's an R&D field. So they're going to bring in different devices every day. They're running Raspberry Pis, which are kind of a security risk, but we know they're, they're secured off in the DMZ. So we can exclude them from, from being detected. Um, and this is where we add different data sources as well. Right. We can use core light data to the 365 dashboard and with the enterprise IoT, all we need to do here is add our subscription for Defender for IoT and that's where we turn on that security as well. Um, and again, we can do active and passive and standard and, and basic discovery. Um, where we're, we're using, you know, basically unicast and broadcast traffic versus just unicast. So that was just a little quick tour of the um, enterprise IoT dashboard within MDE. So if the if you have MDE P2 or E5 with Microsoft Security, then you get this tab automatically when you log in. You just don't get the security and um, exposure risk level. Um, fields here in, in the asset inventory, they, they come with the security license, um, with the Defender for IoT license. So just a heads up. Okay, so let's go back to presentation and I will start to wrap things up. So why Microsoft? Well, obviously we, we have MDE, we have our end-to-end -end security story. We tie it all into um, Sentinel, which can then integrate into other third-party securities. We have, you know, a network sensor for your OT traffic, your enterprise IoT traffic. Um, that all feeds into, you know, plain English alerts and logs, as as you saw in that demo. Now um, we have that agentless protection, so that zero impact on performance on your devices throughout your whole enterprise, whole network deployment, OT and enterprise IoT. Um, we have that continuous discovery. So be because it's sitting there passively, any new devices come in, takes a couple of seconds, and, it, and the device picks up in your device inventory. The world's largest IoT um, and OT threat intelligence research organization, Section 52, like I discussed. And then, I've, you know, like I've said many times, with that visibility, um, you can do your risk assessment and, um, you know, do your governance accordingly. Um, and having tools like Microsoft Sentinel obviously help that with no end, right? And, and provide that augmented SOC solution. So you don't need to go and hire specific OT, enterprise IoT, and IoT style. You can use the, you can uplift the current engineers that you have, analysts that you have, um, and, and they can work across the whole stack environment. So just some resources for further learning and reading. And um, as I said, the launch of the public preview of the Enterprise IoT um, from end of November. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat and we'll get back to you with, with some answers. Um, thanks again.